2.6 Motor Disorders Developmental Coordination Disorder Developmental Coordination Disorder is a neurodevelopmental disorder that affects a child's fine or gross motor coordination. It affects around 5-6% to of school-age children and often co-occurs with ADHD or dyslexia. Three general areas of deficits contribute to the disorder, poor predictive control of motor movements, deficits in rhythmic coordination and timing, and deficits in executive functions. Children with developmental coordination disorder struggle with motor activities of daily life, may exhibit delays in achieving motor milestones, and have difficulty with sports and academic achievement. Gross and fine motor impairment is not caused by a medical condition and may be linked to perinatal problems. Children with developmental coordination disorder are at higher risk for language and learning disorders. The disorder can lead to social rejection due to poor motor skills and difficulties with peer relationships. DSM-5 categorizes developmental coordination disorder as a motor disorder, along with stereotypic movement disorder and tic disorders. Clinical features. Developmental coordination disorder, DCD, signs can appear in infancy when motor coordination tasks are attempted. The main feature of DCD is significantly impaired performance in motor coordination. Difficulties in motor coordination can vary with a child's age and developmental stage. In infancy and early childhood, DCD may manifest in delays in developmental motor milestones. Between ages 2 and 4, clumsiness appears in almost all activities requiring motor coordination. Older children may display impaired motor coordination in table games and ball games. Children with DCD may also have speech and language difficulties, academic difficulties, and poor peer relationships. Children with motor coordination problems are more likely to have problems understanding subtle social cues, and their peers often reject them. A recent study indicated that children with motor difficulties perform more poorly on scales that measure the recognition of static and changing facial expressions of emotion. This table shows the manifestations of developmental coordination disorder. Gross Motor Manifestations Preschool Age Delays in reaching motor milestones such as sitting, crawling, and walking. Balance problems, falling, getting bruised frequently, and poor. Toddling. Abnormal gait. Knocking over objects, bumping into things, and destructiveness. Primary school age. Difficulty with riding bikes, skipping, hopping, running, jumping, and doing somersaults. Awkward or abnormal gait. Older. Poor at sports, throwing, catching, kicking, and hitting a ball. Fine motor manifestations. Preschool age. Difficulty learning dressing skills, tying, fastening, zipping, and buttoning. Difficulty learning feeding skills, handling knife, fork, or spoon. Primary school age. Difficulty assembling jigsaw pieces, using scissors, building with blocks, drawing, or tracing. Older. Difficulty with grooming, putting on makeup, blow drying hair, and Doing nails. Messy or illegible writing. Difficulty using hand tools, sewing, and playing piano. Diagnosis. Diagnosis of developmental coordination disorder, DCD, is based on poor performance in activities requiring coordination for a child's age and intellectual level. Diagnosis depends on the child's history of delay in achieving early motor milestones and direct observation of current deficits in coordination. An informal screen for DCD involves asking the child to perform tasks involving gross motor, fine motor, and hand-eye coordination. We should consider age-appropriate expectations for judging possible poor performance. A mildly clumsy child whose functioning is not impaired does not qualify for a diagnosis of DCD. This table compares the diagnostic approaches to developmental coordination disorder. DSM-5 Developmental Coordination Disorder Duration Occurs during early Developmental period Symptoms Delayed development of Motor coordination Psychosocial Consequences Of symptoms Functional impairment Self-care, play, other Functions Exclusions, not Result of Another neurologic Condition. Intellectual disability. Visual impairment. ICD-10. Specific. Developmental. Disorder of motor. Function. Significant impairment. 
in motor coordination, general intellectual, retardation, a specific congenital or neurologic disorder, differential, differential diagnosis. The differential diagnosis for developmental coordination disorder, DCD, includes medical conditions that produce coordination difficulties such as cerebral palsy and muscular dystrophy. Coordination difficulties are usually not a significant deficit in autism spectrum disorder and intellectual disability compared with other skills. Children with neuromuscular disorders may exhibit global muscle impairment rather than clumsiness and delayed motor milestones. Neurologic examination and workup usually reveal more extensive deficits in neurologic conditions than in DCD. Extremely hyperactive and impulsive children may be physically careless due to their high levels of motor activity. Clumsy gross and fine motor behavior and ADHD, as well as reading difficulties, are highly associated. Comorbidity Developmental coordination disorder is strongly associated with ADHD, specific learning disorder, particularly in reading and language disorder. Poor motor coordination does not necessarily correlate with the degree of inattention in children with comorbid ADHD and developmental coordination disorder. Peer relationship problems are common among children with developmental coordination disorders due to rejection in sports and games that require good motor skill. Adolescents with coordination problems often exhibit poor self-esteem and academic difficulties. Children and adolescents with developmental coordination disorder are often victims of bullying and have higher rates of poor self-esteem that deserve clinical attention. Course and Prognosis Motor coordination problems can persist into adolescence and adulthood. Mild to moderate clumsiness can be compensated by developing interests in other skills. Children with average or above average intellectual capacity may have a more favorable outcome. Clumsiness typically persists into adolescence and adult life. Children with developmental coordination problems remain less dexterous, show poor balance, and continue to be physically awkward. Developmental coordination disorder is associated with academic problems and poor self-esteem. Children with developmental coordination disorder have higher risk for obesity and future cardiovascular diseases. Treatment Interventions for developmental coordination disorder use multiple modalities, including perceptual motor training and motor imagery exercises. Two broad categories of interventions are deficit-oriented and task-specific. Sensory integration programs and modified physical education are commonly used in treatment, with sensory integration programs usually administered by occupational therapists. Adaptive physical education programs, social skills groups, and other prosocial interventions may also be beneficial. The Montessori, Montessori technique may promote motor skill development, especially in preschool children. Parental counseling can help reduce anxiety and guilt and increase awareness and confidence. A computer game designed to improve the ability to catch a ball showed positive results for children with developmental coordination disorder. Epidemiology The prevalence of developmental coordination disorder is about 5-6% to of school-age children. The male-to-female ratio in referred populations tends to show increased rates of the disorder in males, but schools refer boys more often for testing and special education evaluations. About two males for every one female are affected. Etiology Developmental coordination disorder is caused by various factors including genetic and developmental factors. Risk factors include prematurity, hypoxia, perinatal malnutrition, low birth weight, and prenatal exposure to alcohol, cocaine, and nicotine. The cerebellum may be a neurologic substrate for comorbid cases of developmental coordination disorder and ADHD. Neurochemical abnormalities and parietal lobe lesions may contribute to coordination deficits. Children with developmental coordination disorder have impaired postural control due to their inability to accurately correct for movement. The, automatiz the automatization deficit hypothesis suggests that children with developmental coordination disorder have difficulty developing automatic motor skills, while the internal modeling deficit hypothesis suggests they are unable to predict the sensory consequences of motor commands. The cerebellum plays a vital role in motor coordination and developmental coordination disorder. Stereotypic movement disorder. Stereotypic movements are repetitive behaviors that appear in early development and lack a clear function. These movements are usually rhythmic and include behaviors such as hand flapping, body rocking, and hair whirling. Stereotypic movements can be self-soothing or self-stimulating but can result in self-injury. They are often involuntary but can be suppressed with effort. Stereotypic movement disorder occurs more frequently in children with autism and intellectual disability. 
Impairment occurs when movements such as head banging, face slapping, or hand biting cause self-harm. Nail biting, thumb sucking, and nose picking are not usually considered symptoms of stereotypic movement disorder unless they cause impairment. Stereotyp stereotypic movements share similarities with tics but have distinguishing features such as a younger age of onset and lack of changing anatomical locations and premonitory urges. Stereotypic movement disorder is characterized by repetitive, seemingly driven, and purposeless motor behavior that interferes with social, academic, or other activities and may result in self-harm according to DSM-5. Diagnosis and Clinical Features Stereotypic movement disorder is characterized by multiple repetitive stereotype symptoms. It occurs frequently in children with autism spectrum disorder and intellectual disability, especially severe intellectual disability. Patients with multiple stereotyped movements often have other significant mental disorders, including disruptive behavior disorders or neurological conditions. Severe self-inflicted trauma can result in extreme cases, leading to life-threatening injuries or severe mutilation. Headbanging is a stereotypic movement disorder that can lead to functional impairment. It typically begins during infancy, between 6 and 12 months of age, and involves striking the head against a hard surface. Infants seem absorbed in the activity and may continue until they become exhausted and fall asleep. Headbanging may be transitory but can persist into middle childhood. Headbanging during temper tantrums is different and stops after the tantrum, often with the control of secondary gains. Nail biting. Nail biting begins as early as one year of age and increases in incidence until age 12. Most cases are not sufficiently severe to meet the DSM-5 diagnostic criteria for stereotypic movement disorder. In rare cases, children cause physical damage to the fingers themselves, usually by associated biting of the cuticles, which leads to secondary infections of the fingers and nail beds. Nail biting seems to occur or increase in intensity when a child is either anxious or stressed. Some of the most severe nail biting occurs in children with severe or profound intellectual disability. However, many nail biters have no obvious emotional disturbance. Pathology and Laboratory Examination No specific laboratory measures are helpful in the diagnosis of stereotypic movement disorder. This table shows the differences between the DSM-5 and the ICD-10 for stereotypic movement disorder. DSM-5 Stereotypic Movement Disorder Onset during the Developmental Period Repetitive slash seemingly Purposeless Movements Marked interference in Activities and Functioning ICD-10 Stereotyped movement Disorders Movements that are Voluntary. Repetitive. Stereotyped. Seemingly purposeless. Movements outside of any. Other psychiatric or. Neurologic condition. May include such things. As repeatedly rocking. Hand flapping or biting. Differential diagnosis. The differential, differential diagnosis of stereotypic movement disorder includes OCD and tic disorders, which are exclusionary criteria in DSM-5. Stereotypic movements can often be voluntarily suppressed and are not spasmodic, making differentiation from tics challenging in some cases. Stereotypic movements tend to be longer in duration and more rhythmic than tics. Tics occur more often when the child is alone, while stereotypic movements occur with the same frequency in different conditions. Stereotypic movements are self-soothing, while tics are associated with distress. Differentiating dyskinetic movements from stereotypic movements can be challenging. Clinicians should note any stereotypic movements before initiating treatment with antipsychotic medications because they can suppress stereotypic movements. Stereotypic movement disorder may coexist with substance-related disorders, severe sensory impairments, CNS and degenerative disorders such as lesh nyhan syndrome and severe schizophrenia. Course and prognosis. The duration and course of stereotypic movement disorder vary, and symptoms may come and go. Up to 60 to 80 percent of normal toddlers show transient rhythmic activities that tend to disappear by four years of age. When stereotypic movements emerge later in childhood, they range from brief episodes under stress to an ongoing pattern in chronic conditions such as ASD or intellectual disability. Stereotypic movements may come and go, even in chronic conditions. Severity of dysfunction caused by stereotypic movements varies with frequency, amount, and degree of associated self-injury.
Frequent, severe, self-injurious stereotypic behaviors have the poorest prognosis and may require physical restraints. Nail-biting is often benign and may not meet diagnostic criteria for stereotypic movement disorder. In severe cases of nail-biting, bacterial and fungal infections may occur. Several treatments are available to control symptoms of chronic stereotypic movement disorder. Treatment Stereotypic movements may not require treatment if they occur in the absence of other symptoms or disorders. Treatment options include behavioral techniques like habit reversal and differential reinforcement of other behavior, as well as pharmacologic interventions. Habit reversal and reinforcement have been found to be effective in reducing unwanted behaviors in typically developing children between 6 and 14 years. Pharmacologic interventions, such as atypical antipsychotics and SSRIs, have been used to manage self-injurious stereotypes. Dopamine receptor antagonists are the most commonly used pharmacologic treatment for stereotypic movements and self-injurious behavior. Clomipramine and fluoxetine have been found to decrease self-injurious behaviors and other stereotypic movements in some patients, but their efficacy is still being studied. Epidemiology Repetitive movements are common in infants and young children, with over 60% of parents of children between the ages of 2 and 4 years reporting transient emergence of these behaviors. The most frequent age of onset is in the second year of life. Up to 7% of otherwise typically developing children exhibit stereotypic behaviors. The prevalence of stereotypic behavior is about 15 to 20% in children younger than 6 years, with diminishing rates over time. Stereotypic movements appear to occur in about twice as many boys as girls. Determining which cases are severe enough to confirm a diagnosis of stereotypic movement disorder can be difficult. Stereotypic behaviors occur in 10 to 20 percent of children with intellectual disability, with increased rates being proportional to the level of severity. The prevalence of self-injurious behaviors is in the range of 2 to 3 percent among children and adolescents with intellectual disability. Self-injurious behaviors frequently occur in genetic syndromes such as Lesch-Nyhan syndrome and children with sensory impairments such as blindness and deafness. Etiology the etiolo etiology of stereotypic movement disorder includes environmental, genetic, and neurobiologic factors. Stereotypic movement disorder is hypothesized to originate from the basal ganglia. Dopamine and serotonin are likely involved in the emergence of stereotypic movements. Genetic factors likely play a role in some stereotypic movements, such as the X-linked recessive deficiency of enzymes leading to Lesch-Nyhan syndrome. Some stereotypic behaviors seem to emerge or become exaggerated in situations of neglect or deprivation. Tourette's disorder. Tics are rapid motor movements or vocalizations in response to premonitory urges. Tics involve dysfunction in the basal ganglia region of the brain, particularly of dopaminergic transmission in the corticostriatophalamic circuits. Tic disorders are more common in children than adults and tend to improve over time. Tics may be transient or chronic, with a waxing and waning course. Gillis de la Tourette syndrome is the most widely studied and severe tic disorder. Tourette disorder includes multiple motor tics, coprolalia, and echolalia. Many comorbid psychiatric disorders and behavioral problems may emerge with Tourette disorder. There is a bidirectional relationship between Tourette disorder and OCD, and first-degree relatives of patients with OCD have higher rates of tic disorders compared to the general population. Diagnosis and Clinical Features Tourette disorder is diagnosed based on a history of multiple motor tics and at least one vocal tic, which have persisted for more than a year since the first tic emerged. Tics usually start in the face and neck and progress downward over time. Common tics include grimacing, blinking, nodding, jerking, shaking, and vocalizations such as whistling and clearing the throat. Assessment tools such as the Tick Symptom Self-Report and the Yale Global Tick Severity Scale can be useful in making a diagnosis of Tourette Disorder. Tourette Disorder is often comorbid with attentional, obsessional, and oppositional behaviors, which may emerge before the tics. Coprolalia, a symptom involving socially unacceptable or obscene words, occurs in less than 10% of patients and rarely in the absence of comorbid psychiatric disturbance. Mental coprolalia, in which a patient experiences sudden intrusive thoughts or words, occurs more often than coprolalia. Severe cases of Tourette disorder can lead to physical self-injury due to tic behaviors. This table shows the differences between the DSM-5 and the ICD-10 for Tourette disorder. DSM-5 Tourette Tourette Disorder Greater than one year duration May include Waxing or Waning, 
Onset before. The age of 18. Motor slash vocal tics. If symptoms of. Only motor. Or vocal. Tics. Diagnosis. Would be of. Persistent. Chronic. Motor or. Vocal tic. Disorder. ICD-10. Combined vocal and multiple motor. Tic disorder, de la Tourette. Presence in childhood slash adolescence. Usually persists into adulthood. Motor tics. Greater than or equal to one vocal tic. Note, for tics that don't meet above. Criteria, consider. Tic disorder, presence of a tic. Defined as an involuntary, fast. Repeated and non-rhythmic motor. Movement or vocal production. That is sudden and seemingly purposeless. Such tics are experienced as urges that are strong, but that can be suppressed variably. Transient tic disorder, lasting less than 12. Emo. Chronic motor or vocal tic disorder. Lasting longer than a year. This table shows the clinical assessment tools in tic disorders. We have Yale Global Tic Severity Scale for tics. Swanson, Nolan and Pelham, and Connors for ADHD. We have Yale Brown for OCD. And a child behavior checklist for child motor disorders in general. Differential diagnosis. Differential diagnosis involves distinguishing tics from other movement and neurological disorders, example, dystonia, chorea, myoclonus. Tremors, mannerisms, and stereotypic movement disorder should also be distinguished from tic disorders. Stereotypic movement disorders are usually voluntary and comforting, unlike tics. Compulsions may be difficult to distinguish from complex tics, and both may occur comorbidly with mood disturbances. The severity of tics may be linked to aggressive and depressive symptoms in children, and worsening tics can affect behavior and mood. Course and pro Prognosis Tourette disorder is a childhood-onset neuropsychiatric disorder characterized by both motor and vocal tics. Symptoms usually emerge in early childhood, with a natural history leading to reduction or complete resolution of tic symptoms in most cases by adolescence or early adulthood. During childhood, individual tic symptoms may decrease, persist, or increase, and new symptoms may replace old ones. Severely afflicted persons may have serious emotional problems, including major depressive disorder. Interference in function is exacerbated by comorbid ADHD and OCD, both of which frequently coexist with the disorder. Most children with Tourette disorder will experience a decline in the frequency and severity of tic symptoms during adolescence. No clinical measures exist to predict which children may have persistent symptoms into adulthood. Children with mild forms of Tourette disorder often have satisfactory peer relationships, function well in school, and develop adequate self-esteem, and may not require treatment. Treatment Psychoeducation is useful to inform families about tics and how to support stress reduction. Severe cases of tic disorders may require treatment due to subjective distress and functional disruptions. Interventions can include psychosocial, pharmacologic, and school-based approaches. The severity of tics can be measured by the premonitory urge for tics scale, puts. Behavioral interventions are typically the first line of treatment, followed by pharmacologic interventions if necessary. Treatment is indicated when tics cause social and emotional problems, depression, isolation, bullying, or academic difficulties. Treatment can improve academic success, physical discomfort, and quality of life. Habit Reversal Habit reversal is a treatment that targets tics through awareness training and competing response training. Awareness training involves self-monitoring to increase awareness of tic behaviors and premonitory urges. Competing response training involves voluntary performance of a behavior that is physically incompatible with the tic, contingent on the onset of the premonitory urge or the tic itself, blocking expression of the tic. Competing response strategy relies on the self-reported observations of patients that tics occur in response to irresistible premonitory urges in order to diminish the urge. Competing response training disrupts the reinforcement of the tic and significantly reduces the premonitory urge, leading to decreased or eliminated tics. Patients can perform competing responses without disrupting usual activities. Exposure and Response Prevention, ERP Exposure and Response Prevention, ERP, aims to break the association between tics and premonitory urges by asking patients to suppress their tics for increasingly prolonged periods. 
The rationale is that the tics occur as a conditioned response to unpleasant premonitory urges and that by resisting the urge for long enough, the need to perform the tic may diminish. Many other behavioral interventions such as relaxation training, self-monitoring, biofeedback, and cognitive behavioral treatment, CBT, are not useful for reducing tics on their own but may be included in comprehensive treatment programs. Habit reversal is the most extensively researched behavioral treatment for tic disorders and is highly effective. Atypical, atypical and typical antipsychotic agents. Atypical antipsychotic risperidone is the most studied and effective in treating tics, but can cause weight gain and metabolic side effects. Haloperidol and pimazide are well investigated and FDA approved, but have significant risks for extrapyramidal side effects. Flufenazine is used in the U.S. without robust efficacy data. Aripiprazole is of interest due to its mode of action and has less weight gain than risperidone, but sedation and sleep disturbance are common side effects. Olanzapine and zapracidone are efficacious but have prominent side effects, while quetiapine may be useful but needs further study. Clozapine is not useful in treating tics. Persistent, chronic, motor, or vocal tic disorder. It is characterized by the presence of either motor or vocal tics, but not both. Tics may come and go but must have persisted for more than one year since the first tic onset to meet the diagnosis. The disorder must have its onset before the age of 18 years. This diagnosis is not given if the patient already has Tourette disorder. Diagnosis and clinical features. Chronic motor or vocal tic disorder usually begins in early childhood. Chronic vocal tics are less common than chronic motor tics. Vocal tics in chronic motor or vocal tic disorder are typically less noticeable than those in Tourette disorder. The vocal tics are usually not loud or intense and are caused by thoracic, abdominal, or diaphragmatic contractions. Differential Diagnosis To differentiate chronic motor tics, various motor movements such as choreiform movements, myoclonus, restless leg syndrome, akathisia, and dystonias should be considered. Involuntary vocal utterances can be seen in certain neurologic disorders, such as Huntington disease and Parkinson disease. Course and Prognosis Children whose tics emerge between ages 6 to 8 have better outcomes. Symptoms of chronic motor or vocal tic disorder last for 4 to 6 years and remit in early adolescence. Children with limb or trunk involvement may have slower remission compared to those with only facial tics. Treatment Treatment for chronic motor or vocal tic disorder depends on severity, frequency, subjective distress, impact on school-slash-work-slash-socialization, and presence of other mental disorders. Psychotherapy may help with social difficulties caused by tics. Behavioral techniques, particularly habit reversal treatments, are effective. Atypical antipsychotics like risperidone may reduce tics when severe. If behavioral interventions and atypical antipsychotics are not effective, typical antipsychotics like pimazide or haloperidol may be helpful. Behavioral interventions are the first line of treatment. Epidemiology the rate of chronic motor or vocal tic disorder is 100 to 1,000 times greater than that of Tourette disorder in school-age children. School-age boys are at the highest risk. The estimated prevalence of chronic motor or vocal tic disorder is from 1 to 2 percent. Etiology Chronic motor or vocal tic disorder, as well as Tourette disorder, tend to aggregate in the same families. Twin studies have found a high concordance for either Tourette disorder or chronic motor tics in monozygotic twins. This finding supports the importance of hereditary factors in the transmission of tic disorders. Thank you for listening.